Hello, today we are going to start the fourth lesson of the course that will be dedicated to the study of the electric potential. This lesson will consist of five videos, three theoretical and two practical. The theoretical ones will refer to the concept of electric potential and other associated concepts, and the next two to the application to the cases of discrete and continuous systems. The application to these systems will also be the subject of two final videos of practical exercises. The first video we are in now is going to be, as I say, the first part of this topic. In it, we're going to talk about the electric potential and the associated concepts that are developed here. First, we'll talk about what is the potential difference, its definition, then what is the potential itself, and then we'll finish with the relationships of mechanical concepts with this electric potential work and potential energy specifically. The first of all is a definition. What is the potential difference between two points? We have here any two points, A and B, and a path that goes from one to the other. The one that we have there marked in blue color. Well, by definition, the potential difference between points A and B is precisely the integral along the path between A and B of the electric field. Since the definition is, if you have never seen this type of integral, somewhat complicated, we are going to give rather the conceptual idea. It is that in any point of that trajectory, an electric field will exist, we will travel an infinitesimal differential segment of R. And what we have to do is the scalar product of both vectors. This scalar product must be done for the infinite segments that constitute the curve. In this case, we have painted a few, because obviously we cannot paint all of them. Let us also remember that the black vectors had to be infinitesimal. That is to say, of such a small size that we cannot see it even with the biggest microscope that exists, then we would have to add up all these scalar products, and that is the integral. This integral is formally analogous to the one that allows us to define work. So we can use everything we know about this type of integral for work of forces. Because as I say, it is formally analogous to the potential difference. The only difference is that in the work, the force is integrated and in the potential difference, the electric field. Therefore, all the properties that we know of cases in which the work is equal to force per distance or zero, because it is perpendicular, etc., can be applied without more than changing force for electric field. Another important detail is what happens if we change the curve. That is, if, for example, instead of using the one that is marked in dark blue on the screen, we used, for example, a straight line or another one that we see in orange. Well, we are not going to demonstrate this. There is a demonstration that exceeds the limits of this course that allows us to justify that the work, excuse me, that the potential difference does not depend on the path, that it simply depends on which point to which point we go, not where we go. And what is potential? We have talked about difference, but we have not talked about potential in concrete. What potential there is in A and what potential there is in B. And that is because there is no concrete value. We need a reference. Let's say, for example, that we take an arbitrary point B, P as a reference. In that case, we would say that VVP will be the integral. And if we take as reference that the potential at P, arbitrarily, I repeat, is zero, we can already define the potential at any other point as the integral until we reach P. This is because you can add, you can change the definition of the potential by adding a constant to all the points, and the difference would not change, the absolute values would. Since this, as I say, is arbitrary, the convention that has been universally adopted is that infinity is taken as a reference. That is, it is considered that it is at infinity where the potential is zero, arbitrarily, I insist on it, so that the absolute potential at any point is the integral when we go from that point to infinity of the electric field. That is, if I want to know the potential at A, I would have to do something like calculating the integral here and not stop until I reached infinity. Other concepts associated with the definition of the potential. First, the relation of the work of the electric field to this potential. The work of the electric field, like the work of any force, is defined as that integral. It is a generic definition. It would be a matter of making that scale point of F by differential of R for each segment and adding, integrating. Now, as we know, the force acting on a charge moving between two points, for any point of them, is equal to the charge itself times the electric field. Since the charge obviously is not going to change along the way, we can take it out of the integral. It is a constant value, and I am left with this expression. Therefore, I already have the integral of the electric field itself, which is nothing more nor less than the potential difference. So, thanks to the definition of that difference, we have this result, which is important. The work in going from point A to point B of the electric force acting on a charge is the product of that charge by the potential difference. I take this opportunity to emphasize an important detail. 
Note that the potential difference is that of the starting point minus that of the destination point, not the other way around as confusingly I have seen many times. Be careful with this order because otherwise, obviously, the result is the opposite. We have here a table with some particular cases that may be interesting. Specifically, what happens when the charge is positive, that is, Q is greater than zero, and what happens when it is negative, when Q is less than zero. And in two cases as well. If the starting potential is larger than the target potential, that is, VA minus VB is positive, what if VA is smaller than the target potential? If VA minus VB is negative, obviously, plus minus, plus minus, plus minus, with this expression gives me crossed. Positive in this case the work, negative in this one, negative in this one, positive in this one. In this way, we can already foresee for each type of load and each type of movement. If we go in the direction of increasing or decreasing potentials, if the potential, excuse me, if the work is positive or negative, since the systems subjected to a single force tend to evolve in the sense in which the work is positive, it means that the positive charges, their natural tendency, if nothing, forces them to something else, is to move in the sense in which the potential decreases. What is said in the sense of decreasing potentials? The opposite happens with the negative ones, which tend to move in the direction of increasing potentials, in moving spontaneously towards where the potential is greater. Moreover, this relationship between work and potential difference allows me to do something I have not yet done, which is to define the unit of potential. The international system unit of electric potential is the volt. The symbol is capital V in honor of volt. And the definition, since, because the international system is consistent, is that the joule must be equal to the product of Coulomb per volt. The international unit of work must be the charge times the potential. That allows me to define the volt from the joule and the Coulomb as follows. It is called volt to the potential difference between two points, such that when taking from one to the other a charge of one Coulomb, the work done by the electric field is one joule. Another detail about this expression that we have just deduced. We can realize, we have already mentioned it anyway, that the work of the force exerted by the electric field does not depend on the path. The path does not intervene anywhere. Here appears the charge that we move, from which point we come and to which point we go. It does not appear anywhere any reference to where we are traveling. I repeat, therefore, the work does not depend on the path. And this is the definition, precisely, of what is called a conservative force field. Therefore, the electric force is conservative. And since it is conservative, by the properties known from mechanics, that means that it has a potential energy associated with it. Moreover, from mechanics, we also know that in the case of a force being conservative, the work between two points is the potential energy of the starting point minus the potential energy of the destination point. Developing then the expression we have derived above and decomposing it into two terms, we have only to compare the upper equation with the lower one, and it is quite clear who is the potential energy at A, who is the potential energy at B, and therefore, what is the general expression of the potential energy? This potential energy is the product of the charge we are moving times the potential at each point. Well, with this, we can go on to summarize what we've seen today. First, that the potential difference, by definition, is the integral that appears here. Remember also the order. Note that it is not the usual order that we know a definite integral, which is upper minus lower bound, but lower minus upper. Second, that the potential at any point is calculated by this integral taking infinity as a reference. Third, the deduced expression of the electric field work as product of charge by potential difference. And fourth, what is the electric potential energy that has it and is product of charge by potential. Thank you very much for your attention.